Hey, this is Joel with American Giants. I thought I'd do this Sunday's episode on what, of course, but the uh, grand opening weekend. We just went through it last weekend, and this is something that I've been waiting for, and many of you have been waiting for, for a really, really long time. So it was a fantastic weekend. I thought in this video I can go day by day and just kind of take us through everything that happened. And we'll start that off with the Waving Giant from Chicago. Uh, a little bit of history. The story, I understand it to this point, we haven't confirmed it, but that there was a waving giant that was a cowboy, had a cowboy hat, and it was at Adventureland in Addison uh, outside of Chicago. And uh, this was ordered in the mid 60s, and then it was on display. They also had a pirate and an Indian version there. This went on until the place closed around 1971. Um, I went there years ago and visited the grounds where this was. Of course, there's hardly anything left now except uh, some concrete and some ruins in the woods. Uh, but the big question is what happened to the muffler men? And we really don't know as far as the uh, the chief and the uh, pirate, we, we don't know what became of them. Uh, but we do know that uh, the Waving Giant went to uh, Big Ben's Tire Barn in Bartlett. And many locals have written me and told me they remember him well uh, through the years into the 80s and into the late 90s. Um, he fell into disrepair. He lost a hand. He was looking kind of rough. And so uh, the city asked him to either restore it or put it in storage. And the tire barn was a big barn. And uh, so this guy was moved into the attic of the barn around 2000. And he has stayed there for the last 24 years. In 2012, you know me, I'm always digging for muffler men and trying to like get their history and tracking down old pictures. And I went into town, showed that picture around. One of the guys I showed it to in a restaurant said, I work in the building where that is. And next thing you know, I'm at this car dealership uh, and uh, Conway's and uh, they let me go up a rickety ladder into the attic and boom, there's a waving giant up there in the cobwebs. It's like something out of a storybook. And so uh, I just kept in touch with the owner. Um, felt really impressed for some reason. I kept thinking about it a few weeks ago. I got to call him, I got to call him, see what's going on. And I called him and he said, I can't believe you called me because I need to sell the building and I'm wondering what to do with this giant. And I'm like, I'll be there. <laughs> so I went up there. Um, I, want, I just want to give a shout out to uh, to my buddy Lee Woods because he uh, really stepped up and met me up in Chicago. I was driving across from Colorado and Lee and I, with the help of some of the employees, uh, went up in the attic. We found this guy. We, we, you know, we checked him all out. He was still there just as I'd seen him all those years ago. And then uh, we uh, kind of had to muscle him over to the garage door. And then it's a straight drop off from there to the ground, like 12 feet and so we had to use like a bucket, um, like a little uh, bulldozer thing with a bucket on it that they had there. And we, uh, it was a little, it was a little sketchy, but we, we got this thing down and uh, got the torso down first without, you know, breaking it. And then it was time for the legs to come out and the legs still had their original international fiberglass platform on it. So that was awesome, but it made it very heavy. Hey, just make sure you don't fall on and then we uh, pushed the legs across the parking lot. And it was really a sight because all those years, this thing had been in storage and now he's finally seen the light of day and he's getting loaded. And we had like, all the employees were out there. It was a big deal. <laughs> and so it was very exciting for us. Uh, and, and it's just, it's a lot of fun to find giants when you can and, and go pick them up. And that's always something I've noticed um, muffler men buyers love and I love it. It's just a really neat experience. So we strap this thing all down and then we start through Chicago with this thing on Lee's trailer. And it's always an experience to haul these and you get tons of looks. And uh, those of us like Lee who are muffler men um, collectors and owners and others uh, who've hauled these know what that experience is like. You know, Lee's been collecting now for a while. He's actually got uh, a place called Driven Towing in Hot Springs. Um, so if you ever are in that area, um, this guy is really coming up on the map with how many muffler man he's got and he's getting more. Uh, he has a Mark Klein custom tow man that we helped him set up and he's got there, he's got hundreds of signs, uh, vintage signs that you can check out and classic cars. 
He's got a bunion that originally was at a, a sporting goods store in Utah way back in the day, and then it went to Connecticut, and then he got it. Uh, so he's got that, and then he's got the Utah Spock Man, uh, which is now in restoration as well. Uh, so it's a fantastic place to stop um, and check out his collection, his growing collection. He's got some other really cool stuff like a Fisk Tire Boy, and uh, he's got an Esso Tiger he just got that he's restoring. So that place is definitely going to be a place to check out on your travels. I really appreciate people like Lee who have a collection and share it with the public. Uh, because that really increases the awareness of muffler men and the joy of traveling the roads and kind of gets people into it. Um, uh, there's others on Route 66 that are doing it. Um, Mary Beth has uh, a, a, at uh, Buck Adams, uh, she ordered him years ago. We helped set him up. Uh, and now she's got another bunion across the street and then she just ordered Stella and she's coming and she's all painted and that's going up very soon. Um, so big thanks to her for all the attention she's brought muffler men. And then you have Aaron at uh, Gearhead Kuros up the road in Kansas. And uh, he's got, uh, he's ordering one from Mark. So that's coming on the scene. So it's really an exciting time for Route 66. And, you know, we're doing the museum and bringing all the giants there. And so uh, it's it's really neat. And it's uh, it's been fun for me to watch all this migration of muffler men uh, on Route 66 and, and other places. So that was Thursday. On Friday, uh, the weather was terrible, but we had people showing up and it was fun to meet a lot of people that I'd never met before, but knew on social media. Um, we were selling some merch, which you, many of you have been asking for. So that was fun. And then um, the Gemini Giant kind of was this last minute thing that happened. ReGiant had been negotiating with uh, the city of Wilmington and the Joliet Museum about restoration and all that was getting figured out. And it looked like it would be a good time to take it down south for restoration. So uh, Bill Thomas with the Betterment Fund uh, worked a two day um, agreement that the Gemini Giant could stop in transit as it was coming down and it would be there for the grand opening. And that was that was really nice because we had a delay on the Texaco Big Friend. It was supposed to get there Friday and it didn't. Uh, so the Gemini Giant like swoops in and saves the day and Lee got, like, pulls into town with that thing. And so that was really nice to offer people uh, that they could see the, the Gemini Giant even though the Texaco guy wasn't there. Saturday was just a fantastic day. It was absolutely gorgeous. A lot of people came out. People were bringing their old sports cars and classic vintage cars and just having a great time. There was a lot of people from social media there that I never met and were meeting each other and doing a lot of photo ops and all kinds of stuff like that. So it was just a lot of fun. It was just an absolutely gorgeous day. The waving giant was there, the Gemini giant was there and everyone was getting to enjoy him. And that was just a lot of fun. So uh, while everyone is enjoying the Gemini Giant and the beautiful day, you know, ReGiant, obviously something isn't on schedule. Uh, they had some delays. This, this, this Texaco Big Friend, it was a complete wreck. And so um, there was kind of a last minute crunch where a lot of things came up that they didn't expect. And that's what caused the delay. There was some issues with the torso and these guys are perfectionists and they did not want to let that torso come out with some blemishes in it. So things were going long. Uh, but it had been a long time in coming, so everything was, you know, coming to a head there, and they were almost done with this restoration. But things had really started many, many years before. Uh, in 2011 or 12, when I was brand new with Muffler Men, uh, I went to a convention in NAB for work, and when it was done, I went out to Pahrump. It was one of the best things I ever did because the Texaco Big Friend was called the Green Valley Giant back then, and it was at a mobile home dealership that was out of business and it was still up in the air at that point in time. So this was just a great opportunity to get pictures and I got a bunch of them. And it wasn't very, it was just a few months after that, that that property um, it was involved in uh, settling a, a lawsuit and restitution for uh, a whole story I won't go into, but anyhow, um, the property needed to be sold and nobody realized the giant had any value or was, you know, special in any way. And so it went to the dump and they, 
almost, they completely destroyed it, taking it down. And uh, so I called the dump, other people called the dump and were like, hey, you, you have like one of the only Texaco big friends that remain. You know, this is a program that goes all the way back to 1966 when Texaco orders 300 of these guys and they're all made by uh, international f uh, fiberglass. And the only statue that was actually designed by an artist, Sasha Snitman, and uh, so it's like, you know, and then Texaco deploys all these giants across America for a few months and they're falling over and people hate them and the workers at Texaco hate moving them because they're so huge and they're blowing over in windstorms and Texaco's like, this, this idea sucked. And they're like, destroy them all. And so to my knowledge, they were all destroyed, all 294 of them and six remain today that I know of. And so that was one of them. And uh, so the dump realizes what they have and they send it to the local museum. And it sat there for a few years until 2016 came along. And uh, I started talking to the curator of the museum uh, named Maryland. And uh, I, I, I said, I think, you know, we want to restore him. This guy's a complete wreck. I think we're its only chance. And if you let me purchase it, I promise you, I will bring it back to what it was. And so uh, the board decided to sell it to us and Neto and I went out there and we took this thing down and we moved it in a box truck and a Penske truck and we hauled it all the way to uh, the Regiant shop, which is the American Giant shop back then. And uh, what a job that was. The thing was full of pigeon crap from stem to stern and it was, a, it was a colossal job and a complete wreck. And we were wondering what in the world we were doing, how we were gonna ever save this thing. And then, you know, the restoration business took off and we were so busy for so many years and just get, that guy get, kept getting pushed to the back burner until finally this museum became a reality and he needed to come to the front burner because he needed to go up at the American Giants Museum. Weather for Sunday was supposed to be terrible. It was supposed to storm all day. And so it did storm in the morning, but then the weather cleared and we got one of the most beautiful days of the week. It was absolutely incredible. And people start rolling in. The attendance was really good. I don't know what the actual count was, but there was hundreds of people that came for the American Giants grand opening. We kicked things off around noon with a question and answer period with Bill Thomas, uh, who uh, the museum is really owned by the Atlanta Betterment Fund, who basically um, is all about making a, that little town of Atlanta better and uh, offering things that Route 66 travelers can visit and see as they come through town. And they partnered with me, so they own the museum and they built it. And I am the loner of the giants. And I have all the historical knowledge and everything to help them build all the plaques and the info panels and all that stuff. So we have a really good partnership. So Bill and I sat down and did kind of a Q and A and you know, the questions that were more about, you know, the museum itself went to Bill and then I had, answered all the, uh, the the questions about giants and their history and muffler men and I loved it you know you give me a microphone and you ask me to talk about muffler men and I'll do it all day and so it was really good we had some awesome questions I loved the participation I loved you know it was just really neat to all of a sudden for the first time have a group of people all together that all were passionate about roadside attractions and muffler men and that was just a unique experience and we're like oh we need to do this more often and like get together uh, but that was just a really cool time to to take questions and talk about about muffler men after that we had the ribbon cutting and uh, that was really cool uh, I've never cut a ribbon or opened any kind of anything in my life before so I was given this giant pair of scissors and I did my pose and everyone could take pictures and the American Giants is officially open. On three. One, One two, three. three. Yeah. You know, and when I'm up there on that ladder and I'm cutting that ribbon and I'm looking around, I'm just, I was so grateful. And, and at the end there, you know, I kind of waved my hand and I said, thank you, because all these people had taken, you know, a holiday weekend. And out of all the things they could do, they came to the museum 
to watch the grand opening and check out the Giants. And I was just, I'm very grateful for the followers I have on social media, Instagram, Facebook, the followers on YouTube that watch my, so many people came up to me and said, hey, we, we watch you and we just love the episodes. And that's all I need to hear. You know, that's why I do this. I just, I love to tell people about these Giants. And as I said before, it was really cool to see all the social media people, you know, Offbeat Jimmy's World was there in Silly America with Valerie that I've never met and who was around long before I started doing Muffler Men and uh, so many others. I'm going to mess this up because I'm not going to name everybody, but uh, there was a lot of people that were there that took time to come and uh, we were all together for the first time. And that was really kind of cool. All these roadside, <laughs> roadside attraction, social media people were all together in one spot talking, talking it up about everything that we did love and do. Finally, the Texaco Big Friend arrives and uh, Regiant and uh, Michael Youngkin and Will Worf uh, pull in with the Texaco Big Friend. And this is the first time, of course, I'm seeing it. And this is the first Texaco Big Friend since 1967 that's been returned to exactly the way he looked when he was made. And that was just an incredible experience. You know, Michael parked right there in front of the museum. They didn't set him up right away. They let everybody um, that had stuck around, which was quite a crowd. Uh, some people had to leave and we totally understand that because he was a bit late, but there was a, a big group of people that still was there. They took pictures and selfies and all kinds of stuff. And it was just great to see that Texaco big friend laid out. After pictures were done, it was time to set them up. And this is a bit of a process, but this is where Regiant really excels um, because we have done this for years and years and years. And uh, so the first thing you do when you arrive on site is you've got to check the Giant over. Uh, unfortunately, the roads in Illinois are um, far from uh, favorable. And uh, so there was some damage to the Giant. Uh, there were some issues where his eye bolts were. Uh, he had a crack in his back, not too bad, but we could see it. And, uh, and there was just a lot of things that needed to be tightened down and bolted down again. And then uh, he needed to be cleaned because of all the rain that he went through. Uh, so we were wiping him down. And there's just, a, uh, sometimes there's final assembly, like the hat uh, was, was uh, he was transported with the hat off, just like they were when they were made back in the 60s and they traveled across America. They didn't have hats on when they traveled. And so uh, the Regiant crew put the hat on and got that all seated. We actually owe a huge, fa uh, we're very thankful for a local uh, auto parts store or auto shop that had some bolts we needed because we needed metric and not standard. Uh, so that was almost a disaster on bolting the hat down. But once we got all that done, then we started the lifting process. And this is always tricky because you never know what the giants are going to do when they come off the trailer. Um, as that weight transfers from their heels to the lift completely, you don't know which way they're going to swing or if the cables have twisted at all or if there's wind. Um, but thankfully, it was a really nice day. There was no wind and we had a nice crowd of people there watching and everything went off without a hitch. Uh, he came, came up really well and uh, we transported him over to the slab that had been poured for him uh, months ago and got him bolted down. And uh, once he was all bolted down and the position was all perfect and you know, Bill, Bill Thomas, I asked him to like pick the position, like where do you want this guy looking? So everything was set and they bolted him down and uh and then michael went up and uh unhooked the uh the eye bolts from the shoulders and uh that was it it was time for selfies and we invited everybody that had stayed stuck around um a lot of you uh, had to leave early and that's completely understandable and many of you didn't even get to come at all because of other things that come up so um the giant is still there you know you still have time plenty of time to take pictures but we are grateful for everyone who showed up and those of you who couldn't, you're very supportive on social media. Uh, and so it was very, very satisfying to finally uh, see him uh, standing after all that work. So now that the dust is clearing and the weekend is over and I took a few days off from social media just to rest and relax, I think we all did. Um, uh, now we're doing kind of the cleanup. Uh, Regiant went back and tallied up the cost. And let me tell you, restoring Muffler Men now is a whole different thing than it was when we started. 
when we started, we could restore these guys pretty inexpensively. Um, but I will tell you that resin has doubled, paint has doubled, labor has gone up, everything in this country has gone up. Uh, and that's affected restoration. And so um, what we thought we had covered, you know, we want to provide this stuff for free um, for the travelers. Um, that's always been a goal of mine to, you know, have something that you don't have to pay an arm and a leg for and you can come and enjoy it and see it. Um, but uh, the restoration costs were significant on the big friend. So we are happy to have you come and check it out. But if any of you would like to um, support this uh, and show your support and, you know, just let us know that you appreciate it, um, we would love donations. It would really help us out. We would be happy for you to. I'll put some information at the end um, of this video uh, and everything would go to the Betterment Fund and they directly pay ReGiant for the restoration. And then there's merch. We have some leftover merch uh, from everything. If you did not get a shirt, um, please let me know. I don't have the online store set up yet, but I can get you shirts so I can ship those out. We have this uh, international fiberglass shirt. I've got some of those left in large and XL. And then we have all sizes for the American Giants t-shirt. Just let me know. Uh, if you're going to the American Giants uh, Museum, uh, to see the big friend, they have t-shirts. All the shops around that square, they are all selling uh, the t-shirts, they're selling coffee cups, they're selling keychains, uh, and you can support local business. Um, and so it also benefits the town, the community, and we also have bobbleheads. If you want a bobblehead, I'm gonna put my email here, uh, shoot me an email, or go to Lee Wood's uh, Facebook page and message him. Either way, we'll get you a bobblehead as well. So just contact me if you want anything, we'll make it happen. The Texaco Big Friend is standing, it's up, it's ready for visitors, it's ready for your pictures. The hours are Tuesday to Saturday, 10 to four every day. Uh, and even if it's closed, you can still get pictures of the Texaco Big Friend, it's right there. And uh, we just wanna thank you all again for those of you who came out and those of you who supported us and are supporting us and will support us. And uh, it's just a great day for uh, a dream come a dream come true for me to see that Texaco big friend uh, go from a fiberglass heap of ruins to completely restored back to its Texaco glory. Um, I couldn't be happier. Very rewarding. Uh, hope you all can stop by and visit us soon.